Welcome to Check Please, the show where regular people from all over Chicago recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how this show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and the other two go to check them out to see what they think. This week, marketing manager Tim Hall says if you're looking for a place that figured out a way to make the old-fashioned new again, follow him to his favorite hangout for wonderful whiskeys and amazing food. But medical copy editor Martha Pascal says she's found a spot that'll make your belly happy any time of the year. She says for perfect pierogies and much more, roll on in to her recommendation. But at first, producer and director Zoe Wesson says his pick features the very best of what Chicago should be. He says for sublime southern food, a star chef, and a vibrant crowd, follow him to Hyde Park and join him at Virtue. They should expect a high level of warmth and kindness from the time they hit the door to the time they leave. We serve southern focused food. We want you to feel like it is the best of what southern food has to offer. We are nestled in Hyde Park's downtown area. And we chose this location because it exemplifies everything we want to embrace about community. It has diversity on every level. The idea that people come in and they have their apprehensions, they don't know what to expect, and they leave trusting us. We want each and every person to feel like they're a part of the experience from every level. It's a pretty amazing feeling to know that you've become a destination and a place where people feel like they arrived to something that was worthwhile. So you say that Virtue is worthy of the high price. Tell us why you chose it. Well, Virtue is Southern cuisine with a kick of soul. And um, it's representative to me of everything that Hyde Park stands for. Because when you eat at Virtue, not only is the food amazing, but the, 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 the clients, the patronage, the, the diners. Hyde Park's the only community where you can have somebody with a top 10 rap hit walking down one side of the street and a guy who helps split the atom coming down the other side of the street and they both know each other. They're like, hey, professor, what's happening? I dare say ice pick, good to see you. You know, it's wonderful. You know, so this is a very personal restaurant for you. It is, it is. Why so? Well, I'm, you know, I'm from the South. I was born in Mississippi. I was brought to Chicago when I was two. So even though I was in, in the North, I grew up in a Southern household. So we ate Southern, we talked Southern, we thought Southern, you know. And when I went to Virtue and I saw a lot of the same dishes I grew up loving um, on the menu, but served in such a fine dining way, yes. it, it, it was just fortified. Yes. You know. So Chef Eric Williams, who for many years, yes. uh, over a decade, was a oh, chef yeah. at MK, Eric. you know, brought this virtue of Southern hospitality yes. Yes. and Southern food yes. to Hyde Park. Yes, yes All he right. did. So, Tim, how would you describe the food? I would say the food is southern cuisine with a modern twist. It was beautifully plated. Yeah. I tried everything on the menu, and it was so full of flavor and rich. Mm -hmm. For the entree, I had the short ribs, which the short ribs were braised beautifully on top of a, they called it a crushed potato. It wasn't fully mashed, so right. it, was, it was a chunky crush, yeah. crushed potato, and it was... Is that the one with the cream spinach on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah the cream spinach yes. on it as well. Um, my off the bone. Oh, it melts yeah. in your mouth. Yes. I started off with uh, the biscuits and cheese, oh. and then it had this amazing oh. pimento cheese yes. bread. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was to die mm -hmm. for. And then I followed it up with um, some kind of appetizer. It was a fried green tomato, mm -hmm. had shrimp that. on top, yes. a remoulade sauce yes. on top. It was so yes. good. Yeah. And then I just had a lot of dishes that were very different, but they were all very complimentary mm -hmm. to the actual dinner itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the salmon was perfectly yeah. cooked. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, vegetables the vegetables that came with underneath it, it? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. They were so fresh and crisp. Yes. They were, it was like this really nice, you know, just farm, picked right from the farm. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah. And of course, if I'm going to go to an upscale southern restaurant, mm -hmm. I want to try some of their comfort dishes and yes. see how they yes. kind of do a unique twist to it. So they had fabulous grits, very high quality, excellent mac and cheese. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everything went together really, really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm so glad you guys dug it. You know? yeah. so, so what are some of your favorite dishes? Oh, uh, the short ribs, mm -hmm. um, the gumbo. I haven't had gumbo that good since I've been to Dookie Chase in New Orleans. 
And that's the best gumbo I've ever had. So Dickie you put Chase this right up there with New Orleans. With, yeah, yeah. New yeah. Orleans mm. gumbo. New Orleans, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not only was the food great, the service was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, the manager, the bartender, the waitress, the front uh, desk person came, all came over to check on us, how we were doing. And it was just a great experience all around. It's interesting. Chef Eric, uh, he has just was named by New York Times as yes. one of the top 16 black chefs in America. Absolutely. You know, as of last year, 17% yep. of all executive chefs are African American. Wow. And I think with the work mm. that Eric's doing, mm -hmm. that number hopefully will grow because well, he's given a, a representation yes. of what young black chefs can be. Mm -hmm. And this is very personal work for well, him. Well, just watching him walk through the dining room, greeting people, and seeing some of the younger diners look at him in awe. Because, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. And there he was. Because you got to remember, he's more than just a chef. He's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. And so this was all his vision. He pulled all of this together. And, you know, you get to sit in it and experience it and think, well, what dreams do I have that I might be able to aspire? Yes, yes. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. The representation, I think, yeah. for everything from the food to yes. the crowd yes. to yeah. the work that he's doing. Yeah. You walked into the place mm -hmm. and it was a complete vision. The other thing that I thought was really great there were their drinks. Yeah. In addition to their food, I think their cocktails are quite notable. Yeah, absolutely. I actually tried the Duke of Earl. It was a one made with egg whites. And, you know, whenever you can give me a cocktail with egg whites, <laughs> I love it. Really? So it was, nice. it was delicious. And it, so? Nice. I just like the way the, the airiness the it brings to mm -hmm. it and the frothiness. There's a peach cocktail that also has that mm -hmm. egg white oh, yeah. frothiness. Yeah. And it was perfect. Yeah. So any favorites from the dessert menu? Um, we had the uh, banana pudding. Oh, I love banana pudding. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was, you know, rich. I mean, but you know, it's, it's the South. So yeah, it's going to be rich and sweet. That's yeah. the South. That's how we get down. But I had dessert as well. My dessert was different because it was a blueberry pie and it came mm. recommended and it definitely wasn't overly sweet. Oh, okay. It was a little bit sour. Right. Um, oh. And I actually thought it was a nice ending to right. Right. the savory meal that I had. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you selected Virtue Summit up for us. Virtue is a amazing communal restaurant that serves Southern cuisine that's inspiring and shows us really, in my opinion, what the country could be when people come together around a common love of food and conversation. Martha? Upscale Southern cuisine in a cool and chic restaurant. All right. And Tim? Southern love on a plate. Okay. Nice. <laughs> well, nice. you can see what all the buzz is about at Virtue, 1462 East 53rd Street, 773-947-8831. They're open Wednesday to Sunday for dinner and brunch on Sundays. Reservations are accepted, and the average tap per person without drinks is $35. Chicago's Polish population is huge. Martha Pascal knows that a lot of people haven't found their one favorite regular spot yet. She says she knows a place that'll change all of that. It's on Gulf Road and it's called Culinarnia. Culinarnia is different type of Polish cuisine. It's not your babcia kitchen. We decided to put little modern twists and old traditional dishes. We tried to put influences of different cuisines into Polish. We, we just mix. It's elegant, with elegant plating and always fresh ingredients. You can see me shopping every day for wherever we have in our kitchen.
I was always dreaming about opening a restaurant. I love to cook. I remember I spent all of my childhood in the kitchen with my grandma. This is when the love began. So for me, I feel that my dream came true. It is our baby. I think everyone's, not only mine. We all put our heart here to uh, make sure that this heart and love is on a plate. So Martha, you say Culinarnia is quite the experience. Tell us why you chose it. I love Culinarnia because the food there is just as good as the Polish food I had growing up in the area and yet there are so many unique takes to traditional dishes and also many dishes that you wouldn't expect to be as good at a Polish restaurant, uh, but they are very good. How does Culinarnia compare to other Polish restaurants in the Chicagoland area? I would definitely say it is the most unique Polish restaurant that we have in town because we definitely have a lot of Polish buffets and delis, but that's exactly that. Huh. It's many buffets. It's a mm. lot of wood paneled walls. Mm -hmm. It's very old fashioned yeah. and you certainly wouldn't describe Culinarnia as that. No. Uh -uh. They definitely have a different decor. Uh -huh. They certainly have the theme of kind of the red and the yeah. whites <laughs> of the Polish flag. It's excellent Polish food and it's very modern. Oh, it was amazing. So what did you have, so? I started off with the lobster and spinach pierogi. Mm. Amazing. That's yeah. an example of a yeah. twist. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. So yeah. you have your potato and cheese, yeah. but you have the lobster and spinach and you wouldn't yeah, you usually never have that. Yeah. And, I, and I just wanted to see what those flavor profiles, how they would work in the context of a pierogi, and it was amazing. And Fantastic. you had goulash too, though, right? Oh, I had the goulash, yeah, I had the goulash. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did had, you like the goulash? I love the goulash. <laughs> The goulash was wonderful. The gravy was rich. The meat was very well prepared, very tender. Was it sour cream that they said on it? And you mix that in it, it's heaven. I haven't been to many Polish restaurants, um, but this was really good. The service was great and the food was hearty. Um, I started with the borscht, which fell a little flat for me. It was, the, the broth was really thin and didn't include a lot of, you know, beets or vegetables mixed into it. And then I went ahead and had the Polish platter which had a little bit of everything. So it was a great way to try a little bit of everything on the menu. And it was phenomenal. I left just wanting to go take a nap. Were you stuffed like a cabbage roll? I was stuffed like a cabbage <laughs> roll. What was on the platter? It was a cabbage roll. Um, <laughs> there was a potato pancake, kibasa over sauerkraut, and some pierogies, which were cooked in bacon fat. They were the best part of the platter. So, so had you had Polish food before? I, I, the only thing I'd have had with Polish in it was a Polish sausage <laughs> from Maxwell Street. What, you know, on the south side where I'm from, we don't sit around and say, you know what, I got a taste for some Polish food. <laughs> I had never been to a Polish restaurant. What's fascinating about it, it's like going to another world. It was like going yeah. to another country. Yeah. Me and my business partner, we walk up to the place and a lady's sitting out front and she's eating some borscht. Mm -hmm. And she's eating a borscht and she looks up, she sees us and she stops. And she just looks at us as we walk in the place. I'm like, don't get too many brothers and sisters <laughs> out here at the Polish restaurant, but that's cool. So we go in and the hostess was wonderful and she was very gracious, sat us down. And right away, what blew my mind is that everybody was speaking Polish. You know, I felt like I'm really transformed and I'm somewhere else. I'm in another culture, just to hear people all around me speaking another language and laughing and having a good time. And this was their spot. The people who yeah. are eating there, this is where they come to eat. I went on a afternoon on a weekday for a late lunch, okay. and I was impressed to see that the restaurant was pretty busy yeah. mm -hmm. with a lot of Polish natives, yeah. a lot of Polish-speaking people there. Yep. And, yep. you know, you go in and you're like, okay, this is going to be good food because mm -hmm. these are the people you know, that right. know they the food. Know. They, they know, know yeah. so yeah. it was delicious. Oh. The other thing that I like about this place is usually with a pierogi, it's not the prettiest looking dish. It's no. just a stuffed dumpling, but yeah. they have this very pretty braid around oh, it. Yeah. So it's yes. just presentation it's is big at Culinarnia. It's beautiful, it was. Mm -hmm. All right, so Martha, what are the items to get when you're at Culinarnia? Well, I'm glad that you guys got something with the Polish sausage. Mm -hmm. The Polish plate is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Another uh, noteworthy favorite of mine is um, this sheep cheese appetizer. Mm. It's served on this toasted croquette mm -hmm. and it's like on a bed of greens and it has this very pretty purple sauce. Um, and then my husband, who's a pescatarian, he recently had a risotto and shrimp there again. Ridiculously good. Yes. The risotto and shrimp. I'm like, what's the risotto doing at, <laughs> at the Polish yeah. restaurant? But it's ridiculously, yeah. uh, it was amazing. It's Go the ahead. best risotto I've had. Martha, any favorites from dessert? You know, I've had the baked plums there. Again, that's very Polish. Yeah. That's what I had. Where it's not overly sweet. It mm -hmm. does have this great, um, Cream sauce with it? I, I don't know if that was typical. It was whipped cream and then ice cream. Yes, like yes, yes, yes. So cream. that was that was yes. a nice 
compliment to uh, you know the sourness of the plum. Yes. And, yeah. and that's very Polish. So I'm glad that you yeah. got it. You oh, got yeah. a, a very typical Polish oh, dish. Yeah. Good bang for the buck. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean the the plate was as big as this table, <laughs> and the price was you would think it would be four times more as expensive as it was. Yeah. It was right. a great price it was, point. It was a wonderful yeah. price point. Yeah. All right, Martha, you chose Kulinarnia. Sum it up for us. Elevated Polish cuisine in a modern and unique restaurant. Tim? Hearty food that's going to put you to sleep at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> and so? It's like going to the Eastern Bloc but not having to leave Chicago. Okay. All right, you can try the modern Polish fare for yourself at Kulinarnia, 1730 West Gulf Road in Mount Prospect, 847-981-0480. They're open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are accepted, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is $20. says years ago his selection led the way to Logan Square becoming one of Chicago's tastiest and most interesting dining destinations. He says for a spot that will always lift your spirits, join him on Kedzie Avenue at Longman and Eagle. We're kind of an everyday restaurant, we're a special occasion restaurant, a good gastro pub, a modern American restaurant for a great place to hang out. The cocktails, we have a really great mix of like classic cocktails. You know, we've got a wonderful spirit list. We have one of the largest collections of whiskey, especially rare whiskeys. Eat, sleep, whiskey, right? That's the, the motto. Right now we really try to focus on like Midwestern tradition. We use a lot of vegetable forward dishes. Uh, we use a lot of kind of off cuts and odd cuts. Uh, we try to do things that are just fun. Like we, we don't do anything that we don't want to eat and anything that we don't want to cook. For them to eat a food that they're familiar with and then say this is like the best burrata I've ever had. Probably the best fries I've ever had. <laughs> the best burger I've ever had. This is the best salmon I've ever had. I think that's really special. And I think that's the approach that we try to take is the food doesn't have to be so avant-garde, but we really want it to be like special. So Tim, you say Longman and Eagle is excellent. Tell us yes. why you chose it. Well, I love Longman and Eagle because you walk in and it's a busy, it feels really busy, but as soon as you sit down, you just feel in a very relaxed environment. You're really comfortable and the food is phenomenal. It's American cuisine with the innovative and creative twist. They use the freshest ingredients and the menu is changing constantly. So you go there and every time you go, you can try something new, something different on the menu for whatever's in season. So what'd you think? It, now, that, now that I see Tim, <laughs> I understand Longman and Eagle a lot better. Really? How okay. so? Because it is the hipster capital. <laughs> You're hipster, Tim. <laughs> of America. I have never seen so many beards in one restaurant in my life. It's and beard Mamba. heavy. Oh, and, and Mamba. Mamba. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's where the hipsters go to frolic, man. I was like, my goodness. So, I, so we walk in, you know, and the, the host, he's got a beard and very nice, little aloof. <laughs> very nice. Leads us to the table. And it felt to me like a very lively pub. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like an old school saloon. Yeah, that's yep. it. Kind of like um, one step beyond a gastro pub. Yes. You know? Yeah. So I, I, I was really impressed with that. I am so glad that 
that you suggested the place because I never would have gone there yeah. otherwise. I remember reading about this place years ago, and I know that it was incredibly popular as soon as it opened, mm -hmm. and tasting the food, I can understand why. Uh -huh. But I was a little scared as somebody coming in from the suburbs, yeah. knowing that you yeah. couldn't have a reservation there. Uh -huh. But yeah. actually what was really appealing is seeing that it is a very big space. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of indoor space, outdoor space, and patio space. Yep. So if you are going, even at a busy time, I can't imagine the wait to be that incredibly long. It can be long, but even even so, they have that they have a bar in the back that's a half outdoor bar that you just go and have a yeah. drink at. You can get a little appetizer out there while you wait for your table. So okay. it's not like you're waiting out front or you're waiting cramped in, in the they front of your table. They've got lots of whiskey to keep you <laughs> They've got oh, yeah. lots of whiskey to keep you entertained. <laughs> the brunch at Longman and Eagle is phenomenal. You know, they have traditional mm. chicken and grits, mm. chicken and gravy, um, but then they have new menu items. So something I had there recently for brunch was shapshuka. So tell me, what is that? It's a, a soft boiled egg or hard boiled egg in a tomato sauce with yes. some feta cheese and black olives. It's a traditional Israeli dish. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. The, the shakshuka Amazing. is when you shake it, it makes okay. like a shakshuka shaking sound. It's like an onomatopoeia. Yeah. 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 Every, anytime there's something new on the menu, I like to try whatever's new. Yeah, because the menu's always changing. Always changing. It's an American regional fair. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Longman and Eagle has really built a name for itself in the last 10 years about doing sort of creative, inventive food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much so that so many restaurants have popped up in Logan Square after yeah, the fact. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, yeah. so Martha, what did you eat? Uh, so I had a lot of brunch foods. So um, mm -hmm. I had this yummy corn elotes yes. benedicts. Yeah. Um, and it just had this very yummy hollandaise sauce mm -hmm. on top. And I'm pretty choosy, but hollandaise sauce, and it was just very, very good. Mm -hmm. And then I had um, this kind of French toast with this, what appeared to be some kind of homemade mm -hmm. um, strawberry component to it. Yep. So that was really nice. I tried the pepper bacon. And to mm -hmm. me, that so, yeah. felt very much mm -hmm. so like a throwback to old time pubs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a white corn grits that was really, really good. Yes. What I admired about um, the place is the audacity of the chef. I looked at the, the items on the menu, and I'm like, this is just amazing. He had mm -hmm. a appetizer of crispy pig, pig ears. ears. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't think of the last time I saw pig ear on a menu. Because growing up on the South Side, pig ear sandwiches is what I grew up eating. You know, that was, you know, that was a good night. We're going to have pig ear sandwiches. And so, you know, I, I was very impressed that he had that on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had the uh, Low Country Boil. Yes, I had that. What's in the Low Country Boil? Mussels. Yep some andouille sausage, yep. potatoes, and corn. How did the Low Country Boil compare to dishes you've had in the South? It was more gourmet. Okay. Because, you know, you go to the South and you get a Low Country Boil, it's like, you know, you can't see over it. I would have liked more, but again, understanding the place and what the chef was doing, I, the, the portions are fine. One of the more amazing features about Longman and Eagle is the kitchen is at the center of the yeah, restaurant yes. and it's tiny it, yeah. from a restaurant tour perspective yes. how they're able to turn out high quality food from that little kitchen i just find it it's so astounding mm -hmm. it's it's a miracle for me oh it is yeah. i mean would you not agree i would agree completely. you're like is this the kitchen that's it there's right. gotta be an there, you think like, there's a back room no right. that's oh, it's it right there, right there. Yeah. yeah and three people can barely fit in there i think yeah. i saw a guy hanging from the raft this season <laughs> yeah. you just saw his arm come down yep. and he, <laughs> All right, Tim, you chose Longman and Eagle. Sum it up for us. American food at its finest uh, with a great whiskey menu and a comfortable atmosphere. All right, Zoe? Um, elevated gastropub, cool people, cool atmosphere, very innovative. Okay, and Martha? Very high-end pub and grub, the epitome of Logan Square. All right, well, you can check out the whiskeys and much more at Longman and Eagle, 2657 North Kedzie, 773-276-7110. They're open every day from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. Reservations are not accepted, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is $30. So on this week's show, we featured Virtue in Hyde Park, Culinarnia in Mount Prospect, and Longman and Eagle in Logan Square. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we strolled to 53rd Street and visited Virtue. Zoe recommended it for its superb southern cuisine and diverse clientele in an exciting neighborhood. Martha enjoyed its upscale dishes and cool cocktails. Tim loved the refined and soulful plates and attentive service. Next, we headed down Gulf Road and tried out Culinarnia. Martha recommended it for a modern and elevated take on classic Polish dishes. 
Zoe said it was a wonderful introduction to Polish cuisine and authentic environment. Tim appreciated the tasty, hearty food and generous portion. Lastly, we kicked it over to Kenzie Avenue and lined up at Longman and Eagle. Tim recommended it for excellent American food, comfortable feel, and an ample whiskey menu. Zoe liked the hip atmosphere and innovative dishes, but thought the portions were lacking. Martha said, try it for elevated pub grub in a trendy part of town. Well, we've had just a wonderful time this week, and I'd like to thank my guests, Zoe Wesson, Martha Pascal, and Tim Hall. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Alphina Singh, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, that was great. Yeah. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Please, go to wttw.com slash check please.